Good morning. How's everybody doing? So, uh, so I'm supposed to present data. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to present daggers. Because if you think about the purpose of all this research that Jim has just talked about, it's not about the big data. It's about the needle in the haystack, as he mentioned. We just completed a representative sample of fifth through 12th graders in the US. This is part of a 100-year commitment that Gallup and Operation Hope have made to measure what we essentially describe as the economic energy of youth in the United States. I could share a lot of data with you. I'm just going to focus on the most important insights. Let me just start by giving you the Cliff Notes version of this. There is an enormous amount of economic energy among our youth in the United States. That's the really good news. The problem is there is a huge disconnect between that energy and real opportunities to put it to work. So let me start with some of the good news first, and that is that almost half of fifth through 12th graders in the United States say that they plan to start their own business someday. This is down a little bit from when we began this research in 2011, but it is still a huge percent of our youth saying that they plan to start their own business someday. What's interesting is that if you cut this by demographics, it turns out that non-white youth in the U.S. are much more likely to say they plan to start their own business than white students. This, by the way, is a sea change in just a simple generation where the majority of entrepreneurs today are white and the majority of the entrepreneurial energy among our youth is coming from the non-white population. Just think about all the enormous opportunity we have connected to that. It also turns out that if you ask these young people to evaluate their lives, it's a critical question we ask all over the world from our world poll. We ask Americans every night off of our nightly poll, how do you rate your life? Where do you think it'll be in five years? This is fascinating. If you cut this by their household income, there is no difference in life evaluation. Don't any of us ever think that these young people don't believe that they have a good life today or a good life in the future just because they might not have a high enough household income. There's no statistical difference on life evaluation. What we know is actually something really fascinating that on another point about demographic differences, we actually find that students from the lowest income bracket are much more likely, this is fascinating, they're much more likely to say they get to use their imagination at school and to work on solving real problems in school than kids from middle-income families and from wealthier families. That is just a fascinating point. In terms of the opportunities they actually have in schools, right, the opportunity to nurture this entrepreneurial energy, the good news is that we have a decent percentage of kids reporting that their schools offer education about money and banking and education about how to start a business. But on entrepreneurial education, we're down since 2011. We're up slightly since 2011 on learning about uh, money and banking. But it's still barely half of the kids in the United States reporting that their schools provide this opportunity. And when it gets to the brass tax items that I mentioned before, right, super high energy but not connected to real opportunities, very few of them are actually in internships, working in a real business, or have already started their own company. And by the way, if you cut this by household income, the kids from the poorer households are less likely to say those things across the board. But if we look at this, right, just if you take the national average, this is cut by income and the three buckets that I have here, there's only about 4.5% of 5th through 12th graders in the United States that are interning in an organization right now. 4.5%. It turns out that kids from lower income households are more likely to learn about money and banking in their school. So we're doing a great job of getting these 
programs into schools that it's disproportionately, it appears, affecting lower income students, the bad news is that they're half as likely to actually have something real like a bank account. So we have this unbelievable gap between the energy and the real opportunities to put it to work. So if I just summarize this real quick, since we started measuring this in 2011, we are going in the wrong direction on all but one of the key measures we're looking at. Since 2011, fewer kids in the United States are interning, fewer of them say they're currently running their own business, few of them are actually working in a real business, fewer of them have a bank account, and fewer of them say their schools are teaching entrepreneurship. We are going in the wrong direction. But here's the good news. This is an energy opportunity gap. I would much rather face the problem of not being connected to real opportunities than to sit here and look at no energy among our youth for doing this. That's a much tougher problem to fix. The problem that we've identified with this data is an easy problem to fix if we just put ourselves to work on it. And so I would argue that this is not an issue for American schools. As business leaders and organization leaders in the United States, let me just make this point. Schools don't offer internships to students. They don't have jobs necessarily to offer to students. They don't have entrepreneurs running around the halls teaching students. They can't open up bank accounts for students. This is not a school's problem. This is an opportunity for American business leaders to go and change this with schools. So I'll leave you with this point. We should just get off of our ass and go do it. Thank you very much.